It's the Daily 304's presentation of famous people, places, and events that shaped West Virginia. Welcome to the History Project. Today we take a look at John Brown and the Raid on Harper's Ferry in the Civil War, Part 1. John Brown seemed unprepared for this world, failing at everything he tried by the time he was 50. But when he devoted his life to abolitionism, the world was unprepared for him. He became the avenging angel of the enslaved, once murdering his opponents with a machete. He fought pro-slavery groups in the Kansas Territory, where battles were so full of carnage that it gained the nickname Bleeding Kansas. But the blood did not stop there. On the night of October 16, 1859, hoping to start an uprising against slavery, Brown led a guerrilla army to overtake the armory at Harper's Ferry, an arsenal created by George Washington, whose great-great-nephew Lewis became a hostage. News of the raid spread, and Brown was met by the Marines. Led by Robert E. Lee and Jeb Stuart, the military overpowered the abolitionists in two days, killing 10 men, including two of Brown's sons. Virginia's governor, Henry Wise, had Brown tried for murder, insurrection, and treason at the courthouse in Charlestown. Convicted on all counts, Brown was sentenced to hang, and VMI professor Thomas Jackson, later known as Stonewall, served as witness. Brown's final testament read, I, John Brown, am now quite certain that the crimes of this guilty land will never be purged away, but with blood. Two years later, the Civil War began, with Brown's raid on Harper's Ferry, its oakery. Ironically, those who accused Brown of treason and oversaw his demise, Lee, Stewart, Wise, and Jackson, left the Union to join the Confederate Army. America's definition of patriotism, treason, and brotherhood would put the nation to a test written in blood transforming John Brown from a madman into a prophet.